I don't want to see the toilet, but. Yeah. No. Couch. Yeah, I do see a couch, actually. There's the toilets in there. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> Where are you? Uh, I'm at my buddy's place. Uh, I, I told you, I'm on Palo Alto for our reunion. Oh, yeah, uh, this, this is good. Oh, it's, 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 it's going to be a legendary weekend. This is good. <laughs> So there's a segment I want to do called College Fun. It's, it's, a, it's a good way for me to plan out my family's future. Um, obviously, my son is going to be very intelligent. Waylon, he's three years old. Uh, in 15 years, he will be matriculating to the university of his choice, hopefully. And it's either going to be something like Harvard or it's going to be like uh, more of a budget school. Reed, do you have any in mind? I had you pull a couple. Um, yeah, one of the top ones on the list, Cal State Fullerton. Oh, that'd be good. We, I, Waylon could use a tan like his dad. Um, yeah, it's not for a budget school. That's not bad. I've heard good things. So after this weekend, it's definitely more of a Cal State Fullerton deal. Um, it's not going to be Harvard. Had a rough one. Uh, BYU is the culprit. BYU in the money line. Had a pretty bad day on Saturday. Decided I would push all my chips to the center of the table. And uh, Boise, man, it ripped my heart out. I even called a BYU buddy and was like, what do you think about this? Y'all got a shot? And he's like, no, third string quarterback. It's, it's, it's as good as over, bro, before it's even kicked off. I'm like, okay, free money. This is like stealing. I get this gambling thing. I'm a football player. I know what I'm talking about. I'm going to go out to dinner with my wife and, uh, and be on my phone, and I'm going to hammer – Boise State in the money line. And she's like, you know, what are you doing on your phone? And I said, um, I got to pay the bills. We're riding with Boise. And Meg said, who's Boise playing? And I said, BYU. She said, I don't feel good about that. I said, do you have any basis for not feeling good about that? Have you ever seen them play? She's like, no. She said, don't do it. I said, Meg, trust me. I'm a professional. This is what I do. Sorry, Waylon. Uh, uh, yeah, rough night. I hope, I hope my son's athletic. I hope he gets a scholarship. Maybe Bernie will get elected. That's not a political endorsement, but go Bernie. <laughs> go free college because uh, it could be Cal State Fullerton. So my next guest is going to get me better at gambling, and his name is Stanford Steve. You all know him from the Scott Van Pelt Show, good friend of mine. And I'm going to ask him why us football players are so shitty at gambling. We're going to go over our best picks uh, on the cal college football slate on Saturday and the NFL as well. And hopefully we'll, we'll keep track of that all year long. Man, I am I'm overjoyed to have my buddy Stanford Steve call in and uh, bless your boy with some gambling knowledge. Uh, I do, we usually do this over text where I assault you with text after text over the weekend and tell you all the bad bets I'm doing. Steve, how are we doing, man? What, what are you up to? We're good. It actually works out, Chris. I think, you know, those early morning Saturday and Sunday texts that you send me because I got my three girls running around the house. I know you got your kids. So you're yeah. just looking to try and occupy some time. Yeah. Uh, Disney's on the TV or the kids are running around. So it actually it's a good uh, get going and, and get the momentum going and get your focus going on those mornings. So I do appreciate you checking in. Every and, Saturday and, you know, and, you know, the kids got to eat, you know, so I, I consider it working. <laughs> I try to sell that to my wife is, hey, I'm over here working like what the kid fell down. I mean, like, you know, 10 month yeah. olds, they fall down. I, I got to I got to lay, you know, on the money line on Boise State, which, by the way, <laughs> how bad would you why didn't you warn me about that bet last week? I did. I, I you didn't mention that one. And I know what the case was. That was the last game on the board. And you maybe need a little comeback to get in. So you saw the favorite. And you didn't expect that BYU was going to play really well at home. They got some dogs out there. You know that in Provo. Oh. Boise's quarterback was out first road game. So I, I did not like giving points in that situation. I'm sorry I'm late to the call. But we were on the air, and I, and I saw your tweet. Yeah, you were, you were money busy. Line too, so that's an expensive, expensive loss. It hurt a little bit. And as, as you saw in that last segment, I mean, uh, Waylon's not going to Stanford. Uh, that's for sure if, if this keeps up. Uh, but speaking of uh, – 
your football prowess and your background, mm -hmm. why don't you tell the people out here what a stud you were back in the day and still are? Well, I, I don't really like to do that. I'll let, I'll let other people uh, use the Google machine and, and find that out. But I'm actually out in Palo Alto for our 20-year reunion, which is scary. 1999, we won the Pac-10. Uh, it was the Pac-10 back then. Mm -hmm. uh, we played in the Rose Bowl. Ron Dane beat us um, the year he won the Heisman. But uh, our reunion is here. Uh, we got like 40 dudes coming back. I, I, over 40, I, I think, were confirmed. Uh, going to do the luncheon today for the team. Uh, our coaches are coming back. So it's uh, after I'm done with you here, it's probably going to get loose later on this afternoon, if you know what I mean. Yeah, that's why you got to hydrate. Um, you got to hydrate. You got to cleanse the Absolutely. liver a little bit. And you got to you got to remind guy, you got to remind guys that you know you're 20 years removed from college. Sometimes you get in this setting. And I did this with our Florida State game recently. I hope that's not I, vodka. I was going to um, bring that up because yeah. I knew what you were going to feel like that day after seeing you the, party that the, day. The problem is you get around your buddies back in the same place you played, and your mind is like, oh, we're going to do the same thing. The same amount of alcohol units, <laughs> et cetera, the same <laughs> hours. And it just doesn't work that way anymore. So uh, I hope you enjoy this weekend. By the way, go ahead. There's, there's two things. Yeah. It's got to be light beer. And no shots. Yeah. Light beer and no shots. And then, you know, it's a marathon. You know that. Yeah, no, it's not a sprint. It certainly is. And at one point, I was an Olympic sprinter. At this point, I'm a, I'm a heel runner. Uh, so, yeah. so essentially, yeah, I, I do uh, subscribe to that no shot rule. Uh, I broke it after the Florida State game because we thought we were beating a good team. We rushed the field. Evidently, Florida State's not very good. Uh, <laughs> it was bad. Hey, it's, a, it's the emotion of a college campus, man. You can, it's, I'm glad you got caught up in it rather than be like, oh, what, what, no, maybe not, we should have won by more points. I'm not too cool, You're not man. that guy, though. I'm not too cool. I didn't rush the field. But did you see, and I'm not sure if this is a nod to you, I read an article recently that Shaw uses the tight end more than anybody in college. Yeah, uh, he he goes back a, a couple of years now. He, his big thing is he loves basketball players at those positions. Like, he'll go specifically to watch a kid play high school basketball to see his ball skills jump ability and he's done i mean he's he's done pretty well we got a bunch in there you played with my man Ertz, uh at, oh, yeah. billy obviously who's at the top of the list but it's it's become tight on you uh george kittle and i go back and forth about stanford or iowa and now notre dame's got some dudes too now but i'll take the stanford crop of guys in the league right now for sure uh am i the godfather i i just say i am because like, I, I'm the old guy that's tried to keep in touch with him on social media. Yeah. Came around, and they got drafted just to check in on them and let them know that they're going to root for Stanford harder than they did when they played. So that's just a little advice I try and give them. When, you know, I didn't, I didn't play in the you're not like the You're not like the Uncle Rico of Stanford tight ends. By the way, there's been, no. six, there's been six tight ends that they've had drafted since Shaw's been there. It's pretty impressive. I would say it's tight yeah. end you. And, uh, and, and, Thank you. and that's the way they play. I mean, they, they play a little bit more physical. And, and I, think, I think, you know, walking into a high school gym and watching you shoot hoops would have been pretty impressive back in the day. I think Shaw, Shaw would have liked what he saw. Oh, I, yeah, I could go. I, I could, could go, go back in the day in hoops. You so, know that. So here, uh, 2 210, 215, bro. Yeah. I could go. Could you dunk? Absolutely. Okay. Games. Okay. As a freshman. Oh, damn. On JV, I was a dunker in eighth grade, but no, it's not a big no, varsity. deal. Uh, varsity. Okay. Varsity. Well, so 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 here's why you're here. I mean, football players yep. are bad gamblers uh, when they retire, and that's we been the, well, me especially because I had 11 years to not gamble, and you've been training for this your your entire <laughs> life. So why are we so bad at gambling? Uh, I think it's hard to take the emotion out of it. Um, you know, you're so tied to it. Uh, I think it's a very simple thing of watching film or watching a game. If a player, you know, you think about it when you're watching your opponents, what do you always go do? You always go back and watch the, the last game they played. Right. And then right. you work your way back. But that that last game they played is so recent and, 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 you know, that recency bias in your head. So I think the same thing with gamblers. And then that's the mold of a player and gamblers. You can't take your emotion out of it. You have certain things that you can't get out of your head that you don't like and people you hate and people you really like yeah. and people you favor. Yeah. So it's pretty simple. I mean, it's human nature, but you're just so close to it that you think you know more because you were in there and you played in the, uh, you know, on the dotted lines and in the field. So it's, it's, there's a, there's a, there's an honesty with yourself that you have to come to grips with, but 
it could take a couple Boise State money lines losses to to find that out the hard way. And you know we're, I mean? and you know what the 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 learning process is well underway. That's why you're here. I also want to compete with you. I want to see if the pupil can beat the coach. I think hopefully we'll right. have you on every week. I think what we'll do is three yeah. picks from college, three picks from the pros every weekend. Uh, I was thinking about maybe what the wager would be, but you and Rosillo had a good thing back in the day, I know. <laughs> well, it was funny. Ryan would always, whenever he and Scott would bet, you know, what's the bet, what's the bet? And, and, and Van Pelt was always like, Van Pelt's one of his first questions he ever asked him when they were hosting a radio show. He just called him up. He's like, hey, when you play blackjack, how much do you put on a hand? Mm-hmm. So yeah. you know where Scott was trying to come yeah. up with the money thing. Exactly. Ryan's bet always with somebody was, all right, the bet is shirts off, like Speedo only. You have to wash my car <laughs> no. in the ESPN parking lot, like in the U. You've been there. You know, like that main yeah. drive? Yeah, you know, with, the when they do the, the commercials. Out. Yes, yeah. You have to show your shirts off in a Speedo. You have to wash my car in front of everyone, like at noon on a, on a Friday. That's so, like um, that's that's like maybe worse. Maybe we can get you to ESPN. Well, whatever. <laughs> that's like worse than the People body issue. People want to see me with my shirt off. Me neither. I, I haven't been doing a whole lot of working yeah. out. Let's get into it. Um, yep. Give me. We'll go one, one, two, two, three, three. What are you most confident okay. on this Saturday with the college football slate? Give me a lot. Uh, I like the o- over in the Maryland game. It's fifty-six and a half. I think Maryland is on the cusp of not winning another game. The roster's just been crushed by injuries they weren't good on defense uh to start and on the other side you got minnesota who i mean you could say what you want about pj fleck i asked game day to do a segment on what coaches they thought would take they take that take the longest to get dressed before a game because pj fleck is on that list for me he's the top <laughs> he's got the tie he's got the tight pull over uh-huh. the, kid, the, the pants he's always got fresh kicks so but you can say what you want about all that stuff. The guy's a phenomenal head coach. Yeah. Uh, he's done a great job at Minnesota, turned it over fast. The offense is legit. They got NFL receivers, and Maryland just doesn't have the goods. Maryland does have great skill guys on offense, so I think they can break a couple long plays if you need a couple backdoor points late. So we're going to go over. I don't expect a close game over the total with Minnesota and Maryland. I'll take the under in the Virginia Louisville uh, game here happening tomorrow. Okay. I looked at the forecast. You know, gamblers play the weather. If you didn't know that, it's supposed to be raining. It's supposed to be sloppy. Louisville, a lot of what they do is predicated on speed. I I love Virginia's defense, even with the absence of Bryce Hall. A lot of playmakers there. And I don't think the offense is necessarily clicking. I I know when you looked at last week's game against Duke, we scored a bunch of points. uh, But there there were a lot of turnovers that factored into that as well. And Duke wasn't themselves. So... I think uh, Virginia, Louisville under is my favorite pick. Uh, and followed by that, I would say Arizona State, minus four, um, playing UCLA. Here's the reason. I watched UCLA once this year. Talk about recency bias. I have, like, train wreck bias because I saw them in that <laughs> opener against Cincinnati, and I will not fucking bet on them ever again. I like Herm Edwards. I enjoy his personality. I love the Sun Devils uniforms. Like, that's how simple it is for me when I'm betting the Pac-12 because I have no idea what's going on. Do you like the bet? Well, in that case, I'm not, I'm not talking to you out of that bet. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to warn you. We are at the point. We're right on the cusp of Halloween in November. Ca- conference play in the Pac-12, it starts to get crazy now. Teams go on the road, and you're not going to expect them to look the way you did, and stuff just happens. So there's going to be about – 5,000 people in the Rose Bowl for that game. So there's going to be – you're going to hear all the calls and everything yeah. if you're watching that game that's on the field. That so was like Stanford – Stan- Stan- Hey, Stanford Northwestern, happening. by the way. That, there was nobody I, – I, that was the one Stanford game I watched this year, and nobody was at that game. We have the worst fan base in America. We're Damn. the biggest front runners in the world. The Warriors are going to lose fans. Damn. I'm telling you. That's wow. how bad it is out here. You heard it here. Uh, what's your second favorite pick? I, it, it's it's the primetime game. It's Notre Dame and Michigan. I like Notre Dame. Um, I I've, I've saw Michigan in person at Wisconsin this year. I was not impressed with what they have. They just don't have those guys, man. You see the guys that are running around the NFL, like Devin Bush, you know, this young in, in his career, uh, just doing things at that level. Like, he was a difference maker. When I watch Michigan, I don't see those difference makers on, on defense. In their offense, they have unbelievable wide receivers, NFL-caliber wide receivers. But Patterson just doesn't do it for me. Yeah. Now, they played great. They got up off the deck last week in a tough environment against Penn State. But I like Notre Dame's offense and their skill guys. Michigan hasn't faced a top 40 team in pass yardage in the country all season. And Notre Dame fits that bill. 
Uh, Ian Book is a guy who just moves the chains, does real unselfish quarterback, moves the chains, you know, scrambles on third down, uh, completed 65% of his passes and threw for 275 against Georgia in a, in a real tough, tough matchup. So I think Notre Dame has the goods. They're off a of bye week. Um, and I, I don't know how Michigan is going to react because I don't think Michigan could play better than they did in that second half last week. And I'm not sure that's good enough to beat Notre Dame. Yeah, I would agree with you, actually. I, I can't watch Michigan anymore. Uh, how long do you think Harbaugh yeah, lasts? Yeah, it's tough. I think as long as he wants. Um, there's – there's I, the biggest thing to me when I watch him in person is that he struck out on recruits because when you look at the names, and, you know, I, I follow recruiting not as closely as the, as the main people do. They, they're not they're, – there's not difference makers. As I talked about in that defense, they're D-line. Like, you got guys that are all in the NFL – right now that in the last couple of years i don't i don't see those guys yeah uh the secondary there's a couple guys but there's no burners uh they don't have the return game you know they had peppers for a while that was doing everything for them they don't have that guy and that's to me what the problem is is that they they've struck out on the on the real high uh, and he's lost a couple of recruits real late in the process too so those are the guys i, I feel like are, are ma- i mean michigan doesn't have a running back like yeah. think about that Who's the best running back they've had in, 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 in this in this span? Like Mike Hart? Mike like he Hart. He didn't even last long. That's man. a nice throwback. You know? Yeah. I, I mean, they, they I, I want to give you my third um, just because uh, one of my Pac-12 degenerate yeah. buddies told me. Uh, USC giving 12 and a half. Uh, I think they roll against Colorado. Am I on or am I off? Uh, I mean, they're beat up. I love their skill, guys. I don't like giving double. I never try and give double digits on the road, Chris. Yeah. Uh, you're talking about altitude, bro. You always told me about altitude. Yeah, I have. It's a real thing. It is a Remember real thing. Remember we were talking earlier this year? You called the Missouri loss against Wyoming. Because of the altitude. I give you credit for that. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. see, I am a specialist in altitude games. I have been on the top of Kilimanjaro. <laughs> if you need any altitude football advice, I'll give you that. If Denver's playing somebody, maybe I can I can give you some. By the way, when you play in Wyoming, that's hell on earth, and they put it on the – on the big board up there. It's like, welcome yeah. to hell with the Denver's a mile. That's about a mile and a half. It friggin' sucks. Uh, what's your third game to round out the Saturday slate? Uh, I like South Carolina on the money line. Uh, they're like a three and a half or they're like yeah, a four, four and, and a half. Favorite. Yeah. Four, four. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just say, don't give the points. It's going to be a, a tight, not going to be pretty. Their offense isn't great. They got screwed last week against Florida with the referees, not calling the pick plays down. I love Moss champ. Uh, I would love to play for that dude. And I just don't think Tennessee could block him. South Carolina's got some good dudes on the D-line. I think that stuff travels on the road. Tennessee, uh, I always talk about the week after effect. When you play Bama, it feels like you feel those bumps and bruises on Wednesdays and Thursdays. And they got some young kids. So I'm not sure how they get up off the floor after that loss in Tuscaloosa. So I like South Carolina on the money line. They have a huge advantage at quarterback. And uh, I don't like the Tennessee quarterback, Aaron Tano. He has to play for the freshman. I think you're absolutely right. I think playing Bama, that hangover is as bad as a Stanford reunion. So, uh, I <laughs> – so, hey. hey, you know what else? Speaking of altitude, I, yeah. I never believed anybody. Altitude hangovers are incredible. They're, they're the worst. I mean, had oh a we- went God. to Sam Br- Bradford's wedding in Aspen, and you're up there at the hotel, and you're like, holy shit, like, I, I walked up a flight of stairs and I'm dying. And I'm like, where's the wedding? They're like, oh, up that, that gondola, about 3,000 more feet. <laughs> so everybody's going to have three drinks and be barfing on themselves and slurring their words. Oh. Yeah. So to the NFL where I can actually feel smart uh, and, and it's, uh, it's a peer-to-peer relationship here when it comes to gambling, I'm going to give you my most confident um, pick for Sunday, and that is the under in the Buffalo-Philly game. It's at 43 at this point. I think the offense is going to struggle for the Eagles with everything that's been going on there. That's a team in turmoil right now a little bit offensively. Uh, But as bad as the defense has been, I think they match up relatively well against Josh Allen and that offense. I think they get right. uh, Number two or number three, run defense in the league. Stop the run. Force Josh Allen to make mistakes. I think this this score stays low. I think it's probably 21 is enough to win it. Okay. I, I actually like that game also. I like Philly. I'm not a believer in the Bills. If they win this game, I will be a be- believer in the Bills. But I don't think that it's when the, they win this game. So I'm not a believer in the Bills. I like the Eagles. Damn, dude. They're going to throw you through a plastic table up in uh, Orchard Park if you ever get up there. I would there. love it. The, I would love Let's go to Orchard Park and get thrown through a table. That would be amazing. 
I, I'm in. Okay, totally Bill, in. Bills fans, if you can, you, we we've gambled our money away. If you can buy a first, what, 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 <laughs> Spirit Airlines, what what flies up to Buffalo? Oh, I I don't do Spirit. Don't <laughs> Neither do, do spirit. I. Another one I like is uh, the San Francisco Carolina under. It's at 41 and a half. Uh, when you look at DV, DVOA in, in defense, which I didn't know existed until this year, um, San, Francis, San Francisco's number two, obviously New England's number one. The gap between the two and three teams and the three being Carolina is as big as the gap between Carolina and the 28th best team in, in, in the NFL. So uh, two of the three best defenses in the league, I think it's going to be a low-scoring ball game. I think this is the game Kyle Allen comes back down to earth against that secondary that's played really well. The underneath, uh, underneath stuff won't be there for him. Uh, and, and I think if he passes this test and I'm wrong, you got to wonder about uh, Cam, and we're going to get into that later. But what do you think about that one? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you there. Uh, I think it, I, that's my favorite game of the weekend. Uh, I'm, real, I'm, I'm actually interested to see Garoppolo, too, because yeah. I, I don't know how he's going to go against uh, the guy that like, – Keekley, who's one of my favorite players in the league, guy – I, I just have an ISO cam whenever I watch a Panthers game on yep. him because it's so awesome to watch. So I like your pick there. Uh, I'm going to go with the Jets. It can't be worse for that team this week. I can't imagine how miserable it's been in the locker room and all that stuff after Darnold with the microphone and all that stuff. But they're getting a whole touchdown from the Jags. The Jags, I, we've seen Minshew's come down uh, a little bit. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the Jets plus the points there. Jagging off, as they say. <laughs> um, so uh, here's here's my money line. Like, can we get a, like a like some sort of sound here when I bet a ding, money ding, ding, when ding, I bet ding, a money ding. line a Cowboy Reed? Can we get a money line at some point in post edit? Is that cool? Uh, a okay. money line sound. Whenever I whenever I bet a money line, people need to take heed because I am abhorrent at betting money lines. So just don't listen to me here. But I think Seattle. Uh, goes and, and beats up on the Falcons. I know Atlanta's in turmoil right now. Oof. There's a Dan Quinn factor. Um, there is the factor of a lot of them fire selling uh, some of their best players. Sanu's gone. They're talking about Beasley being out of there. Everybody's for sale. And I don't know if Dan Quinn mm. survives the season. I think Seattle gets right, even though they don't generally play as well on the road. I think they win this game. I know it's going to be a steep cost if I lose it, but I'm going to bet Seattle on the money line. Yeah, I'm just going to give you a little tip. If you're going to lay a six and a half point favorite, if you're going to take that money line, that's got to be your favorite bet because you're almost, you're risking two. Well, times I saved it for last. Okay. I saved it for last. Okay. All right. I All saved right. it for last because Best this is last. the big reveal. Right. What am I going to ruin my family's financial future on this weekend? And I think I'm going to hitch my wagon to the Seahawks. Uh, all right, I'm going to give the points with the Texans. Uh, I love Deshaun Watson. I have a, I have a nice ticket on him for MVP. Mm. Um, I'm hoping for that nice preseason. Uh, I think he's I think he's I think he's the bomb as a quarterback. I love Bill O'Brien. I know people talk about his play calling all the time, but I think they have the goods. I think the Raiders have been playing over their head a little bit, and I think they come down uh, so so. So I, I think Houston uh, puts one on the Raiders this week. I agree. Stanford Steve has been great. I think what we need to do is uh, obviously have you back as much as possible but I think people who follow Stanford Steve and myself on Twitter uh, I think we share the same demo please hit us mm -hmm. up with some ideas on what we should wager on this running tab here uh, of, of locks uh, you know we're gonna be doing this all year uh, maybe not every Friday but hopefully you come back a lot so tweet at us Stanford Steve and Joel 91 myself uh, what's your tag on on Twitter Stanford Steve 82 82 the year you were born right I wish. I wish. <laughs> I think it's about how many. I think it's ready. All the cores lights up. How many beers you're about to down? Okay. Well, Godspeed, <laughs> my brother. And uh, I'll see you next Absolutely Friday. Fans, no. tweet us some ideas. Steve, have a great weekend. Be safe, brother. <laughs>